I think about aging, and I'm gonna encourage you for the purposes of this talk to think about aging as a biological process. So many of you come from the field of human development uh, and aging in the context of human development is a social development process. It's a process of growth, of self-discovery, uh, uh, which is characterized by the acquisition and improvement of many uh, individual capacities. Um, but in biology, uh, it tends to be something that goes mostly in the other direction. So we think of aging as the gradual and progressive decline in system integrity that occurs as organisms age, uh, causing a range of different chronic diseases, disabling conditions, and ultimately death. Uh, we know uh, from a wide range of epidemiologic studies that aging is the leading cause for many cancers, for heart disease, for diabetes, uh, and, and so on. Um, and in fact, there's, there's been some uh, nice work uh, to illustrate that even if we did something extraordinary like cure all cancer or prevent all heart attacks, um, we wouldn't actually dramatically change the healthy lifespan of the population because other conditions would simply replace those um, in, in making people ill. Uh, and, and so this idea of aging and interventions to address it as a kind of silver bullet um, has come to the forefront as we face an aging society. Uh, now, importantly, uh, uh, Around five, 10 years ago, the field of aging biology codified what have been called hallmarks or um, by the National Institutes of Health, pillars of aging, a, a core set of molecular changes that accumulate within and between our cells that mediate this progressive decline in system integrity. Um, and, and most importantly, may represent novel targets for interventions uh, that, that have the goal of extending healthy lifespan. So um, the two figures on the bottom of the slide uh, are, are two um, important efforts at curating this wide body of research. Uh, and if you're squinting at your computer screen, you can maybe read some familiar names. Um, I think uh, most of us by now have heard about telomere attrition. These are the protective caps at the ends of our chromosomes um, that grow shorter each time a cell divides and function as a cellular biological clock, uh, ticking down time until the cell senesces. Um, you'll see epigenetic alterations mentioned in both of these figures. That's what I'll be spending most of my time today talking about. Um, but there are many other aging related molecular changes, including uh, mitochondrial dysfunction, loss of proteostasis, um, uh, uh, alterations of stem cells and the accumulation uh, of damage to the DNA sequence and other molecules. Um, what's most important for our purposes, because I think like many of you, I came from the social and behavioral sciences and not at core a, a, a biological scientist, uh, is what's illustrated on the right-hand figure at the bottom of this slide, the network of connections between these different pillars of aging. Um, and what's important about the network of connections that's being illustrated here is the idea that changes occurring in one biological level of analysis are going to have consequences for other biological levels of analysis. And so we can begin to see aging emerging from these changes uh, as a system level process. This cartoon illustrates uh, the idea of geroscience, which was formalized um, you know, about 10 years ago um, and is the substance of that 2014 article on the previous slide. Geroscience is the idea that we can intervene on these core molecular changes and thereby delay or prevent the decline in system integrity um, and extend healthy lifespan. So what you see here in the cartoon is from left to the right, uh, the accumulation of the molecular changes you saw in the, the figures on the previous slide, effects on the many organ systems in the body, uh, leading to functional decline, uh, disease, disability, and mortality. And the idea of geroprotective intervention is that we deliver interventions that strike at the root of these changes that modify the accumulation of these molecular changes extending healthy lifespan. There have been a number of geroprotectors uh, so-called, uh, that have passed proof of concept in studies of animals. Um, they range from what are currently over-the-counter medicines like metformin, a drug now used to treat diabetes, um, and which holds the distinction of being the first drug approved by the FDA uh, for a trial to um, uh, essentially treat the diseases of aging. So uh, the, the TAME trial was approved to give metformin to older adults who did not have diabetes in an effort to prevent 
the incidence of new chronic conditions of those individuals. So TAME has not yet launched, but it will probably be our first large scale trial of a geroprotector. Um, senolytics are um, in many cases repurposed cancer drugs that are delivered to remove senescent cells from uh, diseased tissues. And uh, especially at Mayo Clinic are, are making great headway in um, uh, preclinical studies, some clinical trials. Um, the drug rapamycin, uh, which we now use to prevent organ trans transplant rejection, um, represented by the Easter Island monolith on the left-hand side of the slide, um, is one that, that many uh, in aging biology are most excited about um, and is getting a trial uh, now in companion dogs at the University of Washington. Um, rapamycin uh, regulates the immune system in ways that may extend healthy lifespan in humans. We know it does that uh, in mice and in some other organisms. And then there are a range of other interventions that we might think of as behavioral in nature. So dietary modifications to manipulate nutrient intake. You can see blueberries at the bottom, which um, uh, have a number of molecules in them that are, are potentially uh, powerful in, in managing biological changes that occur with aging. Uh, caloric restriction, probably our best evidence geroprotective intervention. We've known from the early 20th century that feeding animals less uh, leads them to live longer. Uh, I'll, I'll return to this point, but caloric restriction is distinct from starvation in that it represents a reduction in overall nutrient intake with maintenance of micronutrient sufficiency. So um, we're not starving animals, but if we make sure they get adequate nutrition and reduce caloric intake, we extend healthy lifespan. That's true in worms, flies, mice. Um, and uh, there's evidence from the NIA that it, it may do the same in rhesus monkeys. Although in the monkeys, what we know is that it extends healthy lifespan. Um, the, the, the data are not yet in to establish whether it uh, extends lifespan overall. Uh, uh, exercise in the top right of the slide is perhaps the, the closest thing to a molecular fountain of youth that, that we've uncovered yet. And, and I also uh, put the, the picture of the older adults interacting with one another to represent this idea that social interaction is also a powerful social determinant of health and one that uh, in animals appears to regulate biology in ways which may uh, extend healthy lifespan. So there are many pathways to modifying these molecular hallmarks or pillars of aging, uh, and they all represent opportunities for geroprotective intervention.